Hey there, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Dock stock. I've got uh, another really cool build of a very important submarine uh, in the history of submarines. And I am going to enjoy sharing it with you in just a moment. So some of you will recognize the profile of this boat that I have in the background here. Uh, it is the USS Nautilus, uh, SSN 571, which is the first nuclear-powered submarine in the world. And uh, very important from a historical perspective, but uh, even more so for us hobbyists, uh, it's a darn cool-looking boat. And uh, as it turns out, pretty smoking performer on and under the water as well. So I want to share with you this project. Let's take a closer look. All right, uh, what we have here is a fiberglass hull in 196 scale. I'm going to say it's about three feet long. I didn't actually measure it. Um, but you got that really unique arrowhead stern on the boat. And the cool thing about it is with the uh, large rudders right by this prop and the dive planes directly behind it, uh, you get some pretty astounding performance out of this boat. And obviously it's a dual prop boat, pushes through the water really, really nicely. Um, some features of this, uh, unique features, is the folding front bow planes. And as you'll see in a moment, these don't actually extend fully uh, horizontal, they stay up at about 30 degrees, um, which is unique and a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, I will tell you, works really good. All right, access to the hull is via uh, a simple slot-headed screw in the front, uh, and that uh, is obviously flush with the deck when it's fully tightened down. Now pop that out and try and get this off one-handed here. So this is the, uh, the interior of the boat. Now, just like that German Type 23 that I featured uh, recently as well, this is a 2.5 inch subdriver configured in the snort variant, uh, which basically means you've got an air intake that goes up through the mast here, and that's how it draws air into the ballast tank. Take a look at the cylinder. Obviously, installation is really, really easy. Basically, you just uh, set the little dog bone in the back in place, drop the cylinder down. Now you can put these rubber bands over these hooks like this, but actually the upper hull has flotation foam that presses down directly on it. So these bands are probably not even needed. There's a couple things of note. We've got our receiver uh, tube here. It runs through the inside and that's all waterproofed. And you can uncap this blow into it in order to test for leaks if you put this underneath the water. Uh, and this is the snorkel intake, and that just simply runs up this mast, protrudes out the top of the boat, and this high point is where the boat pulls the air for the ballast system through. As I mentioned before, it's got folding front bow planes, uh, remote on-off switch, automatic pitch control, and uh, a depth control module in the front. So lots of features uh, to this boat that make it a real fun thing to drive on and underneath the water. So I'm gonna show you how this works here. I'll turn a radio on, we'll power it up. So we have an audio indication that everything is working and on this side, we've got the BLM module showing three green LEDs, which indicates a full charge on the lithium polymer battery pack. So let's take a look at the inside components of the boat in operation so you can see how it makes things move. Uh, we'll start at the bow and the, the really the coolest part of it uh, and that is the bow retracts. Um, they are currently in the folded position and this is the servo that controls them. And uh, we can just extend the um, bow retracts there. You can see those pop out, and they do have that angle, and uh, 
control the bow planes there. And then when we're all done, we can uh, retract them back into the folded position. Going into the back, we've got our uh, rudder. And not a tremendous amount of throw, but actually don't need to. Those rudders are huge, actually. And uh, we've got our override for our automatic pitch control. And that does work, obviously, if we tilt the boat up, you can see those dive planes moving to compensate. And we've got our drivetrain, nice and smooth, nice and quiet. I will say, uh, inside here is a, uh, a, an 1100 kilovolt brushless motor, and uh, I needed to dial back the throttle response on the transmitter to about 50%. Otherwise, uh, this thing got spinning at an exceptionally fast rate of speed, uh, obviously too fast for what we want to do. I didn't want to snap the drivetrain, so uh, scaled it back to about 50%, so it gets something a little bit more scale in appearance. So now that everything is all in there, we can tuck our receiver antenna into the boat, just keep it out of the way. And then this runs up inside the um, mast that I had talked about a little bit earlier on, just like this. Pops out the top, we can grab that. The top slips into place, just like that. I trap the hose. And then we tighten down the front and uh, basically everything is ready for the pond. So very, very simple to get set up and ready to operate. Now that you've seen how it all goes together, let's cut some video of how this boat did at her maiden voyage at the pond yesterday. This is like... So there you go. Um, I will say all in all, it was actually a fairly docile boat to drive with an excellent turning radius and response to pitch inputs. Uh, surprisingly, these bow planes work quite well, despite the fact that they are canted up about 30 degrees and are not truly horizontal. Um, but uh, in terms of speed, it's got a perfect rate of speed and is very easy to maintain at periscope depth. So all in all, I'm very impressed with the boat. It is a fun boat to operate and a great size, easy to tuck underneath your arm, transport to and from the pond, and of course, easy to display in your home when you're not using it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we certainly enjoyed building the boat and uh, playing with it at the pond. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, reach out to me, bob at rc sub.com I would love to hear from you you can leave a comment uh, here on YouTube I try and get to them uh, as often as I can but it will sometimes be a few weeks before I have a chance to check it so if you really have a burning question please pop me an email check out the website NautilusDryDocks.com this is Bob Martin the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks thanks for joining me we'll catch you next time